Um, I think it's, I mean, one of the things I, I would say, I, I would uh, make a point about is that I see myself primarily as an educator rather than a researcher. So I'm not here talking as a researcher. I'm a, a researcher as an adjunct to the things I do. Um, one of the things that I would say about openness is that it's much easier to get people to agree to collaborate on projects with you if the outcomes are going to be open. People who are not usually perhaps accessible to you are, are fascinated by the idea or interested that if they collaborate with you that the outcomes will be widely available and they and other people can draw on them. So I think there's an opportunity there if you're sort of maybe not part of a big research project but you're trying to get some research off the ground, you're more likely to find people um, to take part. So in terms of publication of research, what I can say is that I've recently been involved in um, editing a book which is called Reusing Open Resources with Alison Littlejohn. Um, and one of the things that I was firm about was that in order to have um, claims to be about open research, we had to be open ourselves. So we managed to negotiate with Routledge that half of the book would be published in an open access journal. Um, I'm also involved in another book um, on learning design um, with um, Sandra Wills and, and uh, James Dalziel. Um, and that I know is also pursuing the same sort of thing. So I think what I can find in terms of my own practice is that you actually, there's an expectation that things should be open and there's an appeal in things being open. Um, and I do make use of that in terms of projects that I've been involved in.